Okay, let's get in on some online games. And uh, one of the key things that I I've got to remember for myself is playing online has got its pluses. The pluses are that I play more free online, you know, more relaxed, more chilled. I do see the calculations that we're working out. Um, I see the threats, etc. But I don't get too bent out of shape because I, I kind of understand the timing of those calculations. Whereas when I play over the board, I tend to create a ghost situation whereby um, the threats are going to happen immediately type thing and it's uh, it's all going to happen real quick and i'm not going to get the time to do anything not going to get castled and all that sort of stuff so i kind of create this fictitious um scenario giving the opponent's position too much respect when i'm playing over the board going back to defend the pawn here do they lose a bit of tempo let's castle see see how simple that calculation was nice simple straightforward I think the more I have time to think of the position, the more I see of what the opponent can do. And that's where that can cause problems because it's seriously overthinking. It's nice that you can think like that, you know, because you're seeing all the variables, but then you have to take a seat back and say, right, okay, so what's impacting now, this moment in time? What's stopping me from doing the basics of chess, you know? And then from there, just establish a, a better rapport with yourself. Right, so let's go. The queen opposite, but don't really want to. Nah, let's go here. Right. So that's a key thing, I think, that's come out of the games, really. Um, so I'm happy with my form. I'm happy with the form. I'm happy that we are seeing these things. And it's just a matter of what's he trying to do? Squish my bishop. Let's just push that up there. Okay, so Bishop's in a nice position. We had a position like this in one of the games that we had, yeah? And we were in a flap about, oh, they're going to come around the side and all this sort of stuff. But look how chilled and relaxed I am in this position as we are speaking. It's probably almost identical, this um, position. So let's hit the knight. Supporting pawn. Let's hit the queen. I'm not going here because I get taken, so he probably has to go off to the side. Take with the bishop, or take with the queen. No point really taking with the queen, queen's going, whoa! Not doing anything we said. Got an x-ray through, but the pawn just drops. Can just take this bishop pawn, sorry, because the bishop's not taken, is it? It's the rooks x-raying through to the queen. Rooks coming down to help defend the knight. Has it landed on anything? Could we attack the rook as well? Could the knight attack the knight? No, maybe not. I would just take the bishop off the board, keep it dirt simple. I know it gets his two pawns in the center. Got two on one here, the knight is protecting. Let's go and get the rook, they might be asleep. So he's giving us the rook, so we will take the rook, we're on the knight. The pawn's not going to be, well, it's taken, so we take the queen. I'm just going to say it's not going to take because the queen's going to be. And this is the type of thing we're talking about here, you know, take these games with a pinch of salt, really, at the end of the day. Um, but it does give you an idea of movements that you can make, etc. And what you can do in maybe over the board games, that type of stuff. Um, I don't think there's any more competitions coming up that I'm going to be available to go to. So I'm not going to put pressure on myself to try and attend everything because they, they are quite a distance away, some of them. Uh, this last one was fairly okay. It says it's not too far a distance. It's going for another one. Let's block the pawn. Let's develop the knight. Oh, I'm talking and the microphone is all the way over there. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never mind, never mind. Let's capture and let's take it off the board. It's weird how you. I'm not even putting so much thought in. It's so natural a move, but you play over the board and suddenly goes. Ah. I've seen this move a million times, but what if? What if this happens? What if they do this? What if they do that? What if they do the other? And then the opening looks like nothing that you've ever practiced before in your life. I don't know what this is. Attacking the pawn. It's got to be a big massive loss in tempo though, isn't it? It's not, it doesn't look like it's doing much. Sacrificing pieces. Okay, let's go and castle. Rook here. Which one's going to sacrifice the knight or the none? Let's take. Let's take. Castle, he's got a 2 on 1 here, but I'm not. Uh, <laughs> uh, I was just about to say, I'm not going to lose any sleep over the 2 on 1. He's still going to bring his knight in anyway, so we may as well just push the pawn up. Still going to drive it down here, or there, whichever he was. He was coming down with it anyway, it's more to set to do it. So, tuck the rook, bait the pawn. Rook in the centre of the board has no place being there whatsoever. Smaller piece attacking higher piece. Could x-ray through to the bishop. This rook must be getting taken off the board. Hmm, interesting times. Could move the bishop. Don't need to get too leery. Bishop's looking to take takes, but that's not happening. Could just do the x-ray like we said. Bishop takes, pawn takes. So we're not going to do them apples. Um, I think we just bring the bishop back here. It's not going to hurt anything. Okay. Can do the x-ray because the knight's blocking now. But he'll get the pawn. But we'll get his knight off the board. Yeah, let's do that. No, they're not interested. Let's take. It's coming from our rook. It's coming for the rook. Let's take on his rook. Lose, lose, losing lots of pieces. But he's got two rooks and we've got lovely bishops and knight. It's obviously going to be hitting the knight. Block the rook in. Rooks don't have any place in the centre of the board. Get ready for a check on the king. Get ready to bring the knight hit bishop here. Pawn's dropping. This pawn isn't dropping. Do we need to do that? Yes, let's put the check on the king. He could just lock himself in here with the pawn, couldn't he? Oh, okay, nice one. That was frantically harsh, but yeah, good stuff. Going for another one. Let's block the pawn. And let's attack. Well, not attack, develop the knight. Four knights. It's like this knight's coming off, this queen is protecting, so we can bring the bishop through. And we might as well support the pawn. Let's get the bishop out. Okay, so two two days away from playing online chess, I feel like I'm a bit on fire. Not in terms of my playing skills but I just feel like oh let me in let me in so my body's a little bit excited
but I'm also liking the learning journey as well. The comparisons between the two types of um, platforms online and over the board and just really trying to get that mix going quite nicely for ourselves. It's a slow journey. We're not in any rush whatsoever. You know, there's players that want to increase their ratings real quick or whatever and, and be winning everything. And we set our target and we stuck with it and it worked quite nicely for us. Let's just get this knight across and maybe touch the bishop here. Yeah, let's do smaller piece tacking the higher piece. He may just go, well, I'm hitting your bishop because your bishop doesn't look very happy at the minute. Fianchetto time. Or does he capture? There we go. Just hit the head of the snake like we do. I think this knight's looking to get excited. Yeah, exactly. Let's take. Let's hit the head of the snake. This pawn's ready to be taken. So we have to, I'll say box clever. The rook probably needs to take, so it's defending the pawn. But then we're gonna have to be babysitting the pawn. Do we improve our position? Not gone for it, so we could hit here, but I think he's trying to get to here. If we hit there, he goes there. And uh, it's not going to work for him just yet which is a good thing. If we take, it's still not working for him. He's, he needs to have his knight. Yeah, don't take unless of course he's exchanging. Let's take and see how it looks. Oh, I missed that. I didn't even see, <laughs> I didn't even see that. Oh dear me. I don't think it's a big miss though. It's not. I thought he was doing something with his knight and his queen to get a checkmate. So he's only got the pawn back. I'm not sure about this situation they're creating for themselves. Let's bring the knight up. It looks good, but I don't think it's. I've, I'm practicing this thing now that we picked up over the weekend where it's not as bad as you think it is. Just because they're actually swarming around you doesn't mean that they're winning anything. Wants his pawn to get past. I think if you come away from a tournament such as what we came away from, the, the major tournament, um, with something learned, I think that's a benefit, isn't it? I'm going to come here so we can potentially attack here. Don't think he'll allow that, but just take, take. It's going for the pawn. I'm going to take. We just whip in pieces off the board. If that knight stays there, we take, yeah? Or do we just take anyway? I think maybe we, we I think maybe we take. I think we take. Take take fest. And he's looking for his rook to get down here, I think. But if his rook goes down there, it's a checkmate. So let's have a look at what we can do. Take. He comes down. We go up, oh, checkmate. Let's take. And let's take. And you know he wants to come down here. It's not going for that just yet. So can we make something of this situation now? Let's push. Yeah, none of this business. Let's push. Let's push. 
it's not going anywhere. Damn, I'm on fire. And that is just from this weekend's over the board stuff, the learning from it especially. Do you know what I mean? It's it's it does stick in. For that brief moment, it sticks in, you know, and yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean it's just really out of all of the learning, I think the key thing for me is don't over respect the position of the opponent it's as simple as that that's the whole overarching thing really don't over respect it because if you've done a half decent type of starting point opening mid mid type stuff and um, you're going to be fairly okay but if you take too much time yeah if you take too much time thinking about the variables of if buts maybe is what the opponent can do that's where the issue comes around because the ghosts come then and they start telling you lies about what they put what the opponent can potentially do um we had our target we hit the target thankfully so it shows the system works it shows what we are doing does work and for us to jump from the minors section and go into this major section we don't even play regularly at all so really happy with what we're doing i'm not doing it to showboat to anybody i don't get paid for this i'm not professional i do it because i'm the casual chess guy and just enjoy the idea of chess i would i enjoy the strategies the planning etc um you win some you lose some that's the game of chess but along the way, you can improve how you win and you can improve how you lose. Normally, we like the 50-50, man. Um, but on this occasion, we couldn't do that because we're being realistic uh, in terms of the players that we were going to be playing against, which was in the major section. The positive from that experience is... This one was quite an, a very good eye opener in terms of the respect that I give to the opponent's positions when I don't need to overthinking and totally giving maximum respect to their position and thinking that they can do all these variables in that position when really the simple direct moves work quite nicely. The answer to chess.